Uh, do you remember how many points you had in that game against Iverson when he scored 60? No, I don't. He scored 60. I was, the, you know, we lost. It was a tough loss. I don't remember. You had 16. I had 16. You had 16. Just, just rubbing it in a little bit more here, Greg. Yeah, you know, hey, you know what? Flash. Whenever they ask you a question like that, yeah. they already know that. They know the they answer. Okay. I'm a, okay. I appreciate that, Vet. I, open down in the tailpipe, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, a few players in today's game that have tremendous crossovers. Jamal Crawford, Kyrie Irving, Stephen Curry. Uh, going back in the day, Tim Hardaway. But... This is one of the most famous crossovers of all time. AI on MJ. Uh, what made that crossover so devastating? Well, here he was, uh, a rookie coming into the league, going against the best player in the game, probably the best player in the history of the game. And it was sort of a statement play. He comes in and, and goes at him. They're switched off, and he crosses him up twice, hits a tough shot on him. Of course, the Bulls did win the game. But it was sort of like, you know, introducing Allen Iverson to the basketball world and, uh, you know, a great start to a wonderful career. And certainly he's very deserving uh, of having his jersey retired. And congratulations to Allen Iverson. Yeah, just a tough competitor, man. I, Rick, I remember my, my first year coaching in Toronto. I'm in this little restaurant. I go to a little quiet place and walks AI. We, we got a Sunday afternoon game, 12 o'clock. And AI is, is, is hanging pretty good and it's early. And I'm like, and I'm sending them drinks. And I'm like, AI, keep drinking up, keep eating. <laughs> and he looks at me as he's drinking one of my drinks. He's a coach. It's not going to work. I love Toronto. I like to put a show on here. And he commenced to coming out and giving us about 49 the next day at 12 o'clock. And to me, pound for pound, one of the most toughest competitors in the NBA. He knew he was going to get hit, knew he was going to get beat, but yet he kept getting up and he kept coming. And so, like Grant said, much deserved, one of the toughest players ever in the history of this game for his size. And he'll be a Hall of Famer one day, no doubt about that. Uh, you two were terrific defensive players in your day. Talk about how tough it was to defend Allen Iverson. You really couldn't stop Allen Iverson one-on-one. -on -one. It was a, a team effort. And uh, certainly with him, you put somebody on him, but you'd have the other four players uh, aware of Allen Iverson, really trying to let him see bodies when he faced you up. But the thing about Iverson, he was so relentless. He just constantly kept coming at you, coming at you. He drove to the basket. He wasn't afraid of contact. He'd get to the line. He could shoot from the perimeter. Uh, no matter if he was hitting shots or not, he was still going to keep coming and coming. And, uh, and the Philadelphia Sixers knew that. They put him in positions to succeed. And, uh, and, as, and as, you know, as Coach said, as Sam said, really just one of the most relentless competitors this league has ever seen. And, uh, but... You know, you really couldn't stop him. You just had to try to limit him uh, to tough shots from the perimeter. Keep him off the free throw line. Don't let him get out in transition where you get easy baskets. And if you could do that, then maybe you hold him 30 points. That's a lot of ifs right there, <laughs> Sam. Yeah, I mean, look, the guy averaged 26 for 17 seasons. I mean, that's a lot of points. But you tried to be physical with him before he got the basketball. Obviously, if you touched him with it, it was a foul. So you tried to deny him the ball, be physical with him. And then when he drove to the basket, you had to put him on his rear end. You had to try to send a message to him. But looking back, I think all that stuff fueled Allen. It just made him more determined to keep coming. And again, I used to look at him and say, "How do? why do you keep coming? How do you keep coming? But again, this young man, and Grant says the word, relentless. He just kept coming. And he had a motor that wouldn't quit. And the guy loved the game of basketball. You can tell how he played. And I enjoyed watching him. I hated coaching against him, but the great thing about it, I never had to guard him because I wasn't stupid enough to switch on him after I saw what he did to MJ. <laughs> now, one of the things I love, just piggybacking on what, what Sam said, uh, he played in an era where you could be a little bit more physical. Nowadays, you know, particularly point guards, you can't be as physical defensively, you can't touch. Back during his real prime years when he was – really putting in a lot of work and scoring a lot of those baskets, you could be physical. You could to, be a, to be a small guy, to have that tiny frame, but to play with so much heart and so much passion, it was, uh, it was, a fun, it was fun to watch, but it certainly wasn't fun to play. No. Why do you guys think he only made it out of the second round one time? It was that run uh, to the 2001 NBA Finals against the Lakers. But for all of the regular season success, it wasn't parlayed into playoff success that often for AI. It was tough, you know. I mean, it's, 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 it just goes to show you how difficult it is to advance in the playoffs. And, and during his time, I mean, certainly early in his career, he had some really good teams with the Bulls, and they were making their run, and they kind of owned uh, and dominated the Eastern Conference. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, early 2000s, I think New Jersey was really good with yep. Jason Kidd and some of those teams. Indiana had a nice run. So, you know, it's difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, certainly, I think there were some uh, issues with that team. 
That team really relied on him almost too much to score. They didn't have enough offensive power around them. They had some, some good, solid veterans who were role players, great complementary players, played defense, uh, didn't mind Allen taking the bulk of the shots. But uh, with that team, it was just you know relying on a small guy to advance further in the playoffs is not a great recipe in order to have success and, in the And Grant said it. They never was able to put the right team around him because it was difficult finding the pieces to play with Allen. Look, you had to have guys like Eric Snow and guys like that that didn't want to shoot the ball. Eric was a defensive player. Think if they could have found the fit and put another superstar quality player with AI like players are doing today. Back then, guys wasn't teaming up like they were today. So think about if you could have found a guy that could play with AI. And, and again, AI has to call, has to suffer some of the blame for that because he dominated the basketball. So it was difficult when they tried to bring in these other talented players who need the basketball. AI didn't want to give it up. And so that made it difficult. And so that's why they never really advanced other than the one year because they never could find that complimentary piece. They tried. They went out and made trades. They drafted guys to bring in more talented players. But it was difficult because AI dominated the basketball. And the one knock you can say, that field goal percentage, 42% career. Yeah, he scored a lot of points. But when you're taking that many shots, a volume score like AI was, it's difficult to find other guys who want to score to play with him. And so I would say the one knock would be finding that other complimentary superstar to play with him. So Sam just said that he was smart enough not to get switched onto Allen Iverson. Apparently, Grant, you didn't get that memo, and we've got the video to oh. prove it. Take us through. That's this. a Duke education for you, too. No, no, I'm going to tell you. They Duke had, They had versus. me guarding him in Phoenix. Now, why do you put the old man, 36 years old, and put him on Allen Iverson? That's how good of a defensive that. player you were, You know Grant. why? Because they figured after that abuse and you could sleep better at night. Well, where, where's the footage of me going back at him? <laughs> now, he was uh, – I, you know, I, I was so nervous when I had to guard him because I just didn't want to fall, and I didn't want him to. to you didn't want to be down or not. You didn't want to be on the highlight. I didn't highlight want to be a highlight. That's clock. all. That's all. But he, uh, and by then he kind of had lost a step a little bit in Denver. He wasn't the same explosive player. You know, as they, as they say, Father Time is undefeated. But um, you know, just could score in a multiple a multitude of ways. Uh, could get you on your feet, stumbling, backpedaling, as you saw in a couple of those clips. Uh, one of the hardest guys, and I've guarded a lot of point guards through the years. He was definitely the hardest guy for me to guard.